Hi there. In this lecture, we're going to see Tigran Petrosian playing with the black pieces against Mikhail Tal in the 1973 USSR Championship, round 15. We see e4 for Mikhail Tal. Petrosian chooses the Korokan. Yes, after d4, d5, unlike the French defense, the Korokan, your bishop, is still alive. It's not hemmed in. That is one advantage. Knight c3, d takes e4, knight takes e4. We see knight d7. So this is the Karpov variation as it's known nowadays, or well, the modern variation. So it used to be known as the Steinitz variation. We see bishop c4, knight g f6. So by doing knight bd7, black is wanting to simplify potentially without any structural damage. We see knight g5. E6. Okay, the bishop is hemmed in, but Tigran Petrosian is used to French defences, so maybe this is not such a big deal. We see queen e2, knight b6. The key thing is, black is pretty solid now. Bishop b3, a5. And this bishop is being used for tempo gain. It's a slight downside of the whole bishop c4 thing, that this level of harassment is possible. Bit of counterplay here. A4. This pawn is actually a little bit of a target. We see h6. The knight goes back. And now, yeah, the knights are kind of getting each other's way. It takes more time to develop the knights. Yeah, and black plays c5. And this seems to be, as well as a thematic break in, in general, it seems to be very comfortably played here without any possibility of d5. And with these knights congested uh, here at the moment, it seems just to improve black's pieces to play this immediately here rather than bishop e7. So a freeing break, kind of liberational. We see bishop f4 and actually this bishop is challenged with bishop d6. Bishop e5 and now black castles. And Tao plays the very ambitious move, castling queenside. It turns out here, you know, the position is actually not as good as it might seem. It seems as though maybe that Tal is thinking, you know, g4, g5 after castling. But here, it seems as though rook d1 might actually have been safer. For example, this taking, and then queen e5, this might actually represent one of white's best ways to play the position, where black's advantage is only minimal here. This is a very, very committal decision, the castle queenside, in this position. a4 is a weakness. There's a possibility of tempo gain around this area with c4 as well. And in fact we see the move c4 immediately. Bishop takes c4. If bishop a2 then c3 is potentially a deadly form pawn. For example b3, queen e7. The queen is now x-raying this square to come in with the killer form pawn. And for example knight h3, bishop takes and you know white's getting mated so this was taken out so there's no form pawn but now knight takes a4 and we see knight h3 knight b6 g4 so trying to open up this g file it seems very scary actually in one in one view there's also the bishops also pointing at g7 is this counterplay for black too slow here a4 we see g5, hg, knight h takes g5. Otherwise, there's things like g4 coming up, potentially. So that's taken. But, you know, this piece needs to get out of the way for this g-file road to be used. And in the meantime, there's a visitor on the door here, a3, against Mikhail Tal's king. b3, and now bishop b4. It has an idea, potentially, of bishop c3 which cuts escape squares and then a2 for a1 we see rook dg1 and in fact even without bishop c3 a2 is very good because the bishop is guarding d2 king b2 now knight takes c4 check queen takes and now believe it or not just knight d5 even though it looks as though, hang on, isn't there coordination at killer common square here? The thing is, it's common square versus common square. There's also a common square here created. So it swings and roundabouts. 
can white really exploit this in time? We see knight e4, so nothing sacrificial here. If bishop takes g7, black's actually pretty quick with bishop c3 check. If king c1, then just queen in checkmate. And if queen takes c3, this is not working, this position for white. There's a check, uh, potentially, you know, one step away from check. But in the meantime, black plays a1, rook takes, and knight e2. And any dream of the g file, it's been extinguished here. For example, like this. And knight takes f3 hits the rook. So this ends up as being completely harmless. And in fact, the best is check here. And, you know, it's it's completely harmless for black, the whole thing. It's just not in time at all, this position. So knight e4 is actually, it's more important. Black's threat is more important than white's here. So, uh, yeah, if we go to this position after knight e5, black's threat of bishop c3 is parried with knight e4. And then we have f6 parrying black, parrying the g7 issue. The bishop goes back, but now bishop a3 check, king a1. And actually just knight takes f4 is played. Yeah, wh why, did, why did this piece land there anyway? Tal couldn't face just blocking in that G file again. He just gave up the bishop on F4. <laughs> Remarkable, isn't it? He just gave up the bishop on F4, but there's really no attack here. We see rook F7, rook G4. And now queen A5, and the game actually ended here. Why did the game end here when white's getting this piece back? Okay, so Mikhail Tal resigned here. If he plays rook takes f4, guess what black plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Black to play here. Okay. Bishop b2, yeah, very, very forcing. Unblocks the uh, pawn. And this will be checkmate. A really elegant, amazing game played by Tigram Trojan. And Tal considered it one of his uh, worst losses ever. He went on on a big winning streak after this game, <laughs> though, <laughs> for more than 40 games, apparently. Yeah, big winning streak after this game. So this was, yeah, one, one of the setbacks. But uh, Mikhail Tal, clearly, he learned from it. Yeah, it's um, it shows the solidity and the dangers of playing the Karakon, um for White. Yes. A solid choice and not minding this e6 here the key thing is about tempo gaining and the a pawn this a pawn plays a pivotal role in this game actually especially with c4 you know it's got bonus points for the king there this c4 means that the a pawn's liberated and it's pushed it's pushed again and it's very dangerous already here very very dangerous so uh a wonderful illustration that you know sometimes this g file it really needs a bit of time to work as well and in fact black's threats are, are just very, are more important here on this occasion and this f6 yeah Tao couldn't face bishop g3 and even if he does anyway if he does play you know yeah it it just looks absolutely uh uh, diabolical here. Okay, so yeah, this this looks absolutely. Uh, it's it's amazing to think, Tal's uh, Tal was out attacked basically because of this a pawn. I'll take it to the game end. So I hope that's uh, inspirational for you as much as for me. This game, this classic game. Okay, thanks very much. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the free sample from my ultimate guide to chess pawn structures where I really enjoyed gaining a lot of insight for myself and sharing with you guys about various different key structures which you should know about, isolated pawns, backward pawns, hanging pawns, 
I even talk about form pawns. And this actually has a mammoth 45 plus hours of video content in this course. And you can get it at a discount as well with the standard voucher code, which is on King Crusher TV slash pawns. So I hope you do check out this pawn structure course. It's given me a lot of confidence to know fundamentally what's going on. Helps with, you know, getting a template plan quite easily just based on the pawn structure cues of a chess position. Okay, so I do hope you check that out. Thanks very much.